All right, y'all, it's that time of the year again. Let's go, let's get it. My 2022 Grammy nomination predictions are coming up. Y'all ready? It's lit. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Bright here, the R&B Kid, and I'm back again with another episode of On the Bright Side TV. Welcome back, y'all. How you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing very well. Hope you guys are staying safe, sane, and happy. You know, during these trying and weird times we're living through, man. <laughs> please, y'all, please stay safe, sane, and happy because right now I feel like we're living through the Matrix. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, man, let's get to the video. Like you see with the title, I want to talk about my annual Grammy nomination predictions like I do every year. I'm excited to get them all for you guys. You guys love this video for me every year, so I'm I was excited to put it together for you again. Y'all know, for those of y'all who have watched me, you already know, for anybody who's new, y'all know I'm the, I'm the Grammy kid, I'm the Grammy maven. I love talking about the Grammys. I've definitely lost my respect for the Grammys a little bit over the years because of the clear, you know, political mishaps that have happened. You know, just like, just think back to last year with The weekend that was insane. A clear political snub and not anything to do with music. So yeah, I've lost my respect for the Grammys a lot over the years because of their lack of transparency and with all, with all the political stuff that's been happening. But at the same time, I've always still like, you know, appreciate the Grammys for being one of the best and one of the main ways and for us to be able to really acknowledge and celebrate music from all genres in one way, you know, as a, as a musical community around the world. So to me, it's one of the best ways for us to kind of have discussions and start discussions around, you know, what we thought was best every year in music, which is why I love the Grammys. But unfortunately, there's been a lot of political stuff that has really like messed that up for a lot of people, including myself. But hopefully this year will be a year of change. This is going to be a really interesting year for the Grammys. And this is why it's kind of hard for me to put my list together for this year, because this is the first year in the history of the Grammys where they will have no nomination review uh, review committees which is gonna be major for the Grammys you know cuz every year since they started I, I don't know well not since they started but at least for decades now they will always have like general vote for the general categories like they'll have everybody in the Academy be able to vote for the general categories which will you know help them select that like the top 20 songs and albums for the general field but then once they get those top 20 songs and albums and artists for the general categories they'll then form a committee every year of you know of like anonymous people in the industry which is why it gets murky you know, but they'll they'll get a committee together to like approve the final picks for the general categories, which is why we've seen a lot of interesting stuff happen with the general categories over the years. You know, with, with albums that a lot of, that everybody thought was gonna make it in, not making it to album of the year, and songs and records that we thought were clearly gonna make it in, not making it in. You know, for for various reasons, like like the weekend last year, exactly. You know, for example. So, but with this being the first year where they're not gonna have these committees. I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, who will see in the general categories. I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, if we'll have some major, you know, surprises, some good ones, uh, maybe some bad ones, maybe some crazy snubs, we'll see. But I'm looking forward to seeing how a general vote through and through from beginning to end with all these categories will change how things look. I'm, I tried to pick my nominations based on who I thought, you know, really got, the, really has like the most love in the industry to really gauge my nomination predictions. But at the same time, I feel like we never, we don't know what's gonna happen as always. But this year in particular, we don't know what's gonna happen because there's no, these communities are gone. You know what I'm saying? So we'll see what happens. And as well as as that, this is also the first year where they're gonna have no disclo you know, disclosure of the submissions. So this is the first year where I had to really go off of like my heart and my instincts to put together these submissions because like they, did, they didn't disclose the submissions like they usually do. I, I use, you know, sites like Gold Derby and like a YouTube video that I saw for, from Billboard and some other articles to kind of, you know, look at some submissions that were kind of alleged but looked pretty on point. But for the most part, there's no official submissions that are out. So this is the first year where I had to really use my instincts and all that. So this will be really interesting to see how, how things play out this year. Of every category, I'm gonna talk about my final picks for the category, as well as some, you know, albums and songs that, that I think are your know, next in line and some alternatives for the category. I'll have like artists and albums and songs that are long shots and the full list of my people who are contention for each category at the end of the video and the screenshots that you'll see at the end of it. So you can, you can go check that out. I'll put time codes in the description down below so you can go check those out. But yeah, man, let's get into it. I'm excited. Without further ado, here are my 2022 Grammy nomination predictions. Y'all ready? Let's go. All right, y'all, first category, let's get it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it, yeah! <laughs> Shout out Doja Cat. <laughs> All right, but first category is gonna be Record of the Year. So my final picks for Record of the Year are Essence by Wizkid and Thames, Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo, Leave the Door Open by Silk Sonic, Peaches by Justin Bieber, Daniel Caesar, and Giveon, Montero Calling by Your Name by Lil Nas X, Kiss Me More by Doja Cat and SZA, 
Stay by The Kid Leroy and Justin Bieber, and Happier Than Ever by Billie Eilish. So I feel good about this top eight. To me, the locks are definitely driver's license, leave the door open, and Call Me By Your Name by Lil Nas X. I feel like those are the locks. I feel good about Peaches, Kiss Me More, Happy Than Ever, and I want to say Stay as well. I feel good about those, but obviously anyone's vulnerable. And to me, Essence, I don't feel that confident about it, but I, I want to pull for it being like my, like my, like, like the, 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 the beloved darling pick that get that sneaks into this category. So I'm pulling for Wizkid and Thames. Shout out to my Naja people. Shout out to my Naja sister Thames and my Naja brother Wizkid for this amazing, like, honestly, Essence is, is a song of a lifetime. Like, this song will be amazing for decades to come. It's an amazing song so i hope you guys recognize in this category i feel like it could and i feel like it, it, it can so i'm gonna predict it i'm gonna kind of hope predict it a little bit and i feel like it's one of the most beloved songs in the cat in, in in the eligibility year i feel like it's a beloved song by like all people like everyone loves this song so i feel like it'll, it'll definitely get him but we'll see what happens the songs that i think are next in line in record of the year i say are definitely damaged by her positions by Ariana grande good days by SZA. Astronaut in the Ocean by Masked Wolf. I think Up by Cardi B has a shot as well. Heartbreak Anniversary by Giveon. A Rap Star by Polo G. Could definitely see that happening. Butter by BTS. I don't want it to happen, but you know, the BTS fandom could get them in, the, in this category. Bad Habits or maybe Shivers by Cheering. I'm not sure what he's submitting. I'm assuming he's submitting Bad Habits, which I don't like. I don't like that song, but one of the biggest pop records of the year, so it could get in. Uh, Mood, the live version by 24K Golden and Ian Dior. And also uh, Way Too Sexy by Drew. Drake, Young Thug, and Future. I could definitely see those songs being alternative options as well, if any of my eight miss. And some other songs that I think are in contention as well, it could be Kali Uchis' Telepatia, starting over by Chris Stapleton, Willow by Taylor Swift, and maybe Hurricane by Kanye West, Lil Baby, and The Weeknd. All right, y'all, now we're on to Song of the Year. So for my final picks in Song of the Year, I have Damage by Her, Starting Over by Chris Stapleton, Willow by Taylor Swift, Good Days by SZA, Driver's License by Libra Rodrigo, Leave the Door Open by Silk Sonic, Heartbreak Anniversary by Giveon, and Happier Than Ever by Billie Eilish. So I feel pretty good about this lineup. Uh, to me, the only locks in this category right now would probably be Driver's License and Leave the Door Open. Uh, but I feel pretty good about, you know, her, Chris Stapleton, Taylor Swift for sure, who was nominated last year. Her was, her w was nominated in one last year. Uh, Sis has never been a big general field contender besides All the Stars. But I think she has a good chance of getting nominated for Good Days to Share, a really great song, such beautiful lyrics. And Heartbreak Anniversary to me is it to me could be like the surprise pick. Well, I don't think a lot of people are gonna predict him, but I'm kind of gunning for him. I think Heartbreak Anniversary is a brilliantly written song, so I, I'm pulling for him in this category. And Happy Than Ever seems pretty set for nomination in this category as well. But the songs will have next in line for Song of the Year. You no, know, Justin Bieber song either uh, Lonely with him and Blenny Blanco, or Peaches with him and Daniel Caesar and Giveon. I can see one of those making it in. Uh, hopefully Lonely and not Peaches. <laughs> also, Jasmine Sullivan's Pick Up Your Feelings. I can see that making it in as well. Let Me Love You Like a Woman by Lana Del Rey. I've heard a lot of buzz about that song in this category, so I, I have that here as well. Asher on the Ocean by Masked Wolf, for sure. Montara Calling By Your Name, who I don't think should be nominated for Song of the Year, but I can see it being, uh, you know, I can see it coming in because of how popular the song is, so I can see that happening. As well as uh, Right On Time by Brendan Carla. I can see that being a song that's got, that can get in. It's got a lot of buzz for this category, so I can see that getting in. Brendan Carla is a Grammy darling, so I, I can definitely see it happening. And some other songs that I see are, are contention as well. Definitely Positions by Ariana Grande. I don't think we should be nominated, but I can see it happening. Uh, Telepatia again by Kali Uchis. Bad Habits or Shivers by Ed Sheeran. I don't think it should be nominated for this category. Either song should nominate it at all, but he's at Sharon, so I'm not going to put it past him. And lastly, uh, Kiss Me More by Doja Cat and SZA. I wouldn't be mad at them being nominated in this category, but I don't think it would be right. I feel like we would be taking up a, a spot by someone else that had a better song. Kiss Me More is a really great pop song, but it's not like it's really, you know, pushing the boundaries. So I don't think it should be nominated for Song of the Year, but it's a cute song that I definitely want in Record of the Year, but not Song of the Year. But it could happen, though, so let's see, let's see what happens. All right, y'all, I want to do Album of the Year. So my final picks for Album Album of the year are Starting Over by Chris Stapleton, Evermore by Taylor Swift, Sour by Libra Rodrigo, Back of My Mind by Her, Planet Her by Doja Cat, Call Me If You Get Lost by Tyler Creator, Happier Than Ever by Billie Eilish, and Montero by Lil Nas X. 
I feel pretty good about this final eight. Everyone's vulnerable, obviously, but I feel like the locks are definitely gonna be obviously sour and happier than ever. And I I kind of want to say Montero. I feel like Montero's gonna be in. I feel like he's gonna be in no matter what. So I feel like those are my locks. Everyone else is vulnerable, but I feel pretty good about them. To me, Tyler Crater, I don't think there's a good chance he won't get nominated, but to me, I think he could easily take the rap pick for this year. If it's gonna be a rap album nominee, I think he'll take that slot over Drake and Megan and, and Kanye because I think he has the most loved and, and most critically acclaimed album in the pack. But um, he doesn't have like the biggest name right now, so he could be vulnerable in the rap slot. And Drake or Megan or Kanye could take that slot. But I have Tyler right now because I feel like they'll want to make up for him not being nominated for Album of the Year for Igor. So I could see that happening. My next in line albums for this category, I'd say are definitely uh, Positions by Arna Grande, who I don't think will get the nomination. And I don't really care if she does because Positions isn't her strongest record. Even though I like that record, I don't think it's like her strongest album to not for Album of the Year. But it could happen. Ariana's beloved, so I could see that happening. And I won't be mad at it, but I, I, I feel like her next album will be better and that should be nominated for Album of the Year. Not positions but it is what it is good news by Megan Thee Stallion I could definitely say that making it in good news is an album that is not it's not a bad album but I do I do think it's a letdown for the people but it's also critically acclaimed as well so even though I, I don't think the people loved it that much it's critically acclaimed and it has stayed on the charts like since it came out so it could definitely make it in this category even though Megan I love you but I don't think it should be nominated Justice by Justin Bieber could definitely make it in again kind of like Megan's album an album that has been you know not beloved by the people but it's been on the charts consistently it's been one of the biggest albums of the year so I can see it definitely make it in off of Justin Bieber's namesake Donda by Kanye West Another album that to me doesn't really shouldn't be nominated. It was okay, but because of how big it was, I could see making it in. Uh, same thing with Drake Certified Lover Boy. I could definitely see Drake making it in because he has one of the biggest albums of the year commercially, even though I think it was some of, somewhat of a letdown for some people, including myself, um, as an entire project, you know, even though it has gems. Star Crossed by Casey Musgraves. I could definitely see this album making it in. Uh, I had Casey in, for, in my final year for a while, but I took her out because even though I think there could be a big push for it to get into album of the year because they changed her from being into country album to pop album. I still don't think she'll make it in this year because I think this, while Starcross is a great album and it's beloved, I don't think it's as beloved as Golden Hour. And I think Chris Stapleton will take the country slot this year for album of the year. But I could be wrong, but I think that title will play out. But then again, because Casey has a lot of support from you know her fans and industry people because of how they decided to move her from country album to pop album, because I know she have a hard time getting into pop, I think a lot of people will pull for her to get to album of the year to kind of make up for that. So I can see that happening, but I still think she'll get stumped across the board for her album and just be nominated for song categories. But I could be wrong. And then lastly, I don't think it'll get I don't think it'll get nominated, but it definitely could. You know, Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga's love. For for sale i don't think it's been that beloved of an album but at the same time you know we all know what's going on with tony bennett and this is kind of like his last hurrah so i can see them giving him this this nomination for this album but uh, i don't think it'll happen but it could so he's definitely in line for me as well and then other albums that i don't think are definitely gonna get in but they could be is definitely bad bunnies el ultimo tour del mundo the foo fighters medicine at midnight and yeah that's it so those two albums i think could also be in contention as well but let's see what happens all right, y'all, last general field category we got is Best New Artist. Uh, so this is a very interesting year for Best New Artist because there's obviously going to be a clear winner. Olivia Rodrigo is going to win this award easily. There's no competition right now at this point. But so now it's really more of a who's going to be nominated around her. <laughs> My final picks for Best New Artist are Arlo Parks, Baby Keem, Celeste, Gabby Barrett, Mainskin, Olivia Rodrigo, Saweetie, and the Kid Leroy. So this is a really interesting group of artists. I love most of these artists, and so a few of them I don't really know about, but I feel like they're gonna be nominated. I feel like the locks are definitely gonna be Olivia, the Kid Leroy, and Arlo Parks. To me, those three are locks. Gabby, Barrett, Mainskin, Sweetie, and Celeste seem pretty safe, but obviously everyone's vulnerable. And then Baby Keem to me was the, was the unique person I put in this category. I think Baby Keem could be replaced by Polo G for another rap boat. Sweetie's in here. I think I think Sweetie's pretty safe as well. Although I don't know how I feel about Sweetie. I don't really think Sweetie. I did not really see her being nominated, but it seems like she's a popular pick by a lot of people. And I'm not mad at it because she's had a really big year, even though it's not really been for music. She had a huge hit out this year with Best Friend, which I, I'll talk about later in the rap categories. But 
in terms of music, I don't think she's had enough out to put her in this category, but we've seen a lot of artists be nominated in this category, and then the next year they have a really big year when they put out their album. So I could see Sweetie following that format this year and her getting the nomination this year, and that could be okay. So I'm cool with that. I love Sweetie, so I'll be okay with that. I see I, I see a really interesting potential future for her, so I wouldn't be mad at this nomination at all. So I think she has a good chance of being nominated. She's been everywhere this year. But yeah, but Baby Keem is my is my like unique artist I put in this category. Like the one who no, not a lot of people probably see coming, but he'll make it in. I feel like Baby Keem has a lot of eyes on him right now. You know, being affiliated with Kendrick and, and TDE. And he, his album, The Melodic Blue, was amazing. So I really think he's, a, he's an artist a lot of people have their eyes on. So I can see him getting his nomination off of that. Uh, so he's like, he's my, my sleeper pick in this category for this year. But the artists that are next in line for me for best new artists are Ava Max. Conan Gray, Glass Animals, Japanese Breakfast, Polo G for sure, I think has a definite shot to get in, and Snow Allegra as well. For me, for me I feel like those artists are next in line. And the other artists I feel like are in contention for Best New Artists are Blackpink, they could get the nomination this year after not being nominated last year, Masked Wolf, uh, Mickey Guyton, I'd love to see that happen because I feel like she's an amazing new country singer that I, I just love and you know her being black would just be amazing as well. Her a black country singer being nominated for Best New Artist, that would be amazing. Rina Sawayama, didn't get nominated this, last year, could be nominated this year. Ty Verdes and Tate McRae as well. Those are all artists I feel like are in contention, uh, but I feel good about my final eight. So let me know who y'all think about, uh, what y'all think about Best New Artist, who you think is getting nominated. And do you think I missed anybody? Let me know down below. All right, so now we're on to Best Pop Solo Performance. I feel really good about this category. I feel like I have it pretty locked in for the most part. My final picks for this category are Positions by Ariana Grande, Willow by Taylor Swift, Driver's License by Livy Rodrigo, Montero, Call Me By Your Name by Lil Nas X, and Happier Than Ever by Billie Eilish. Feel pretty good about that final five. Feels like the final five that will and should make it. If there were to be like a sixth spot, which that like, you know, like there were last year, I can see that spot going to either Anyone by Justin Bieber, or Bad Habits or Shivers uh, by Ed Sheeran. I can see one of those songs being like a sixth place slot. Uh, other songs that I think are contention, definitely Golden by Harry Styles, we're Good by Dua Lipa, I love that record. And All I Know So Far by Pink. Pink has been a really beloved person in these pop categories over the past couple years, even as a veteran. So I could definitely see her being like someone that sneaks into the category as like a you know beloved veteran pick. I could definitely see that happening. I don't think she'll make it in, but it could happen, so I have, it, I have her here. Now we're on best pop duo slash group performance, uh, which is gonna be a low-key dry category share because we're not gonna have Levitating here, which I'll talk about later and we're not gonna have the Kid Leroy just to be staying here because they apparently didn't submit this category, that song to this category, which I don't understand why they did that. So this will be somewhat of a dry category, but let's get into it. My final picks for this category are Lonely by Justin Bieber and Blenny Blanco, Kiss Me More by Doja Cat and SZA, Butter by BTS, I Get a Kick Out of You by Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga, and Mood, the live version by 24 Karat Golden and Ian Dior. So, a really interesting category um, in terms of the final picks I have here. I feel pretty good about all of them. I feel like Lonely, I never had it up until the final moment where, where I realized that the Kid Leroy uh, and his team did not submit Stay. So because Stay won't be here apparently, to me, I think that leaves enough room for Justin Bieber to come in with Lonely, uh, which is low-key committing category fraud because it's really a solo song. But B Benny Blanco, is, you know, is nominated as a—he's he's credited as a singer, as a as a as an artist on the song, even though he just produced it. But it is what it is. So, yeah, category fraud, but it's cool. Kissing more, I'm rooting for. I wanted to win this category, but I'm, I won't be surprised if it loses to the Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga song. Butter, one of the biggest songs of the year, but I don't think it's a great song. But you know, BTS is beloved by the world, and I can see them winning off of the popularity of the song throughout this year. But uh, in terms of the quality, I don't think it's the best song in this category. I think that belongs to Kiss Me More, and also maybe Lonely. And then we also have Mood, the live version, which uh, Mood was a song that I'm like, I don't love that much, but at the end of the day, it's one of the biggest songs of the year. And I could definitely see him getting a nomination easily just for its popularity, you know. The songs I have next in line for this category, the Kid Leroy and Miley Cyrus's Without You remix, which apparently the Kid Leroy's team submitted this song instead of Stay. Again, dumb decision, but it could be nominated still because it was a big song as well. Rumors by Lizzo and Cardi B, 
could be a song that's not here as well. The Cold Heart Penal remix by Dua Lipa and Elton John. I can see them getting this nomination as a way to kind of give Dua Lipa love in this category for a song that should have been in here, Levitating, but didn't get, won't get submitted by her label because of the baby's drama. Uh, so I can see them nominating this song instead by another gay artist that you know like was not messing with the baby's antics so that could really funny sort of that happens so and also some other songs that could be nominated alternatives include beautiful mistakes by moon five and megan Thee stallion which i don't think should be nominated but it could because it's kind of a cute song throughout the year the jones brothers and marshmallows leave before you love me or maybe the new song who was in your head and also coldplay's higher power all right, now we're on to best pop vocal album, uh, which is a category that I feel pretty good about, but there could be some surprises, some unique surprises this year in particular, so we'll see what happens. But my final picks for best pop vocal album are Positions by Ariana Grande, Evermore by Taylor Swift, Justice by Justin Bieber, Sour by Olivia Rodrigo, and Happier Than Ever by Billie Eilish. To me, those feel like the five that'll make it in, but some albums are next in line for sure. These are the albums that could surprise and I'll be happy with any of them coming in, but I'll be interested to see who will, who will be taken out of my top five if they come in. Planet Her by Doja Cat, for sure. You know, talk about Planet Her, I really feel like Planet Her could have been submitted. And even though it might've been a little bit weird because Doja Cat is not really an R&B artist, I feel like her album would've fit in progressive R&B album. And I feel like it would've been a cool way for her to have a better shot at a nomination and also win with her album compared to best pop vocal album. But I'm not mad at her being a pop vocal album because it fits. Cause you know, playing her release a pop album, but I also feel like it has like a lot of R&B essence to it. So I feel like it would have fit in progress progressive R&B album. So I feel like it would have been smart for our team to have submitted it there. But also maybe the Grammys could have like said, nah, you're, you're, we're gonna put you in pop. So that could have that could happen too. But I feel like if I were in Doja's team, I would have thought about submitting to progressive R&B album. Cause I feel like she would have had a better chance at a nomination and a win. Let me know what y'all think about that. But yeah, Doja is definitely in contention for best pop vocal album, as well as uh, Star Cross by Casey Musgraves. Like I said, she was moved from country album to this category, which is interesting because she's not really, you know, she's never really been in the pop circles like that, especially when we think about Grammys. So I don't know if the pop, you know, if the pop voters will like get her to a nomination, but they could, but I don't think it'll happen, especially for her first, you know, for her first swing of the baddest category, I don't think it'll happen, but it could. And also lastly, Montero by Lil Nas X could definitely be in contention as well. I have Doja and Lil Nas X winning and being nominated for album of the year, but I, I do have the missing pop album, which I think is interesting, but I'm gonna stick with it because I feel, I feel like it makes sense for each of them to not be nominated for, for, for pop vocal, but be nominated for album of the year because Lil Nas X and Doja's albums are not really pop pop albums, but they're just pop albums you, you can't really call them rap or R&B albums, so they're just gonna be pop and that makes sense. But I feel like they'll miss the pop category, but they'll be nominated for album of the year, which I feel like is a great category for both of them to be in. Just album of the year. That To me, that makes sense. Other albums in contention, Love Goes by Sam Smith, Chemicals Over the Country Club by Lana Del Rey, Dancing with the Devil, The Art of Starting Over by Demi Lovato, and uh, lastly, Solar Power by Lord. Those are other albums I don't think will be nominated, but they're definitely contention, so I want to mention them for y'all. All right, y'all, now we're to the RB categories. Let's get it, I'm so excited. Y'all know this is my world. So the funny thing is I always get these categories really wrong all the time, even though like I know what I'm talking about these categories, for some reason, because of nominations committees, they always put in a, a lot of like, you know, critical, darling, sleeper picks in these categories throughout the, you know, throughout the years. But this year will be the first year where they won't have that, so I'm interested to see if I'll do a better job predicting what was actually the most beloved throughout the industry, not by committee. So let's see what happens. But uh, first up, we got best R&B performance. My final picks in this category, I have Damage by Her, Good Days by SZA, Peaches by Justin Bieber, Daniel Caesar, and Giveon, Leave the Door Open by Silk Sonic, and Heartbreak Anniversary by Giveon. So this is an interesting category this year because uh, initially I had Leave, Leave the Door Open in Best Traditional R&B Performance. I thought it's where it fit better. I saw that it got submitted to this category, so that's okay. I'm not mad at it, but I feel like it fit better in traditional. It is what it is. And also Peaches, which I thought all year was gonna be submitted to Best Pop Duo Group Performance, but ended up getting submitted to R&B Performance and Song, which I'm not mad at because it is it is like an R&B song, but I feel like Justin Bieber is, is, is kind of, pulling a whack move. He knows he's gonna get this nomination because it was one of the biggest songs of the year and because he has two black artists on the song with him. But at the same time, I feel like Justin could have easily been nominated for Best Pop Duo and that would have that been fine. Like this, I mean, with, with this song and not Lonely. So I feel like he's gonna take up a, a spot by some by another, you know, pure R&B artist that deserved this nomination. 
But at the end of the day, I'm not too mad at it because Peaches is an R&B song in, in, in its essence, so it is what it is. So, but I definitely see Peaches being nominated, um, even though I think it's a little bit of an unfair advantage with him being Justin Bieber, but it is what it is. My songs that are next in line for this category are uh, Chris Brown and Young Thugs Go Crazy, if, it, if it's eligible. I'm not sure if it's eligible and, and, and if they submitted it, but they did. Definitely could be in contention as well. Lucky Day and Yebba's How Much Can a Heart Take? Love that song. I wanted it in my final five for a, a while, but I took it out because I didn't have enough room. Uh, uh, in, my, in my final fire for it. Leon Bridges, uh, Motorbike, or Why Don't You Touch Me? Either, you know, what's up, whatever song was submitted. Somewhat Loved, They Go Breaking My Heart by Jam and Lewis and Mariah Carey. Lost You by Snow Allegra. You Right by Doja Cat and The Weeknd. Wasting Time by Brent Faz and Drake. Wild Side by Domani and Cardi B. And also Have Mercy by Chloe. I feel like those songs are definitely next in line for nomination in this category. And some other songs that I think could definitely snag a nomination. Uh, some other alternatives in this category include Usher's Bad Habits, Not Another Love Song by Ella May, At My Worst by Pink Sweats and Kehlani, Red Room by Hiatus Coyote, I love that record, Louie Bag by Yeba and Shmino, or maybe her other song Boomerang and also Pressure by Ari Lennox. Those are other songs I think are contention as well, but are more of the long shots. Uh, so yeah, man, let me know something about best R&B performance down below. Next up, we got best traditional R&B performance. So for my final picks in this category, I have Pick Up Your Feelings by Jasmine Sullivan, Fight For You by Her, You Made A Fool Of Me by Anthony Hamilton, He Don't Know Nothing About It by Jam and Lewis and Babyface, and You Want My Love by Earth, Wind & Fire and Lucky Day. Uh, this is a dope category the way I have it, really dope category. I don't know how, how confident I feel about these five, but I, you know, I feel confident about at least a few of them, and especially Jasmine Sullivan, who I feel like will be a lock if she submits here and not armed with performance. Honestly, I feel good about all of these. Yeah, so yeah, that's what happens. Some other songs that I feel like are next in line for Best Traditional Armor Performance. Love is Back by Celeste. A song that I love, but Celeste don't have that much, you know, clout around her name. So I don't think she could make it to a nomination, but I love that song. Strange Fruit by Andre Day. Uh, which has got a lot of love with her being in the movie, you know, the Billie Holiday movie. But with it being a cover, I'm not sure if it'll get a nomination, but I can definitely see, you know, I can definitely see it being in play for sure. BJ the Child Kid, PJ Morton, Kenyon Dixon, and Charlie Burrills, Bring It On Home To Me. I can see that being a sleeper pick. Here I Am Singing My Way Home by Jennifer Hudson, who I had in this category for a while, but I took her out because I couldn't fit her into my final five. Uh, but I feel like she could still get a nomination for Best Song Written for Visual Media, so, and she'll get nominated, she'll get nominated by the Oscars, so she'll get that anyways, you know? She doesn't need this category, but I could definitely see her being in play. And other songs that I feel like are, are contention, some other alternatives for this category, are Charlie Wilson and Smokey Robinson's All of My Love, also, Lila Hathaway and Robert Glasper's Show Me Your Soul. There's probably some other songs that have come out throughout the year that I probably didn't, uh, you know, hear or listen to or, or haven't seen yet that are definitely going to be either in, con in contention or definitely nominated, but I like what I have here so far. So let me know what y'all think about this category down below. All right, y'all, now we're on to Best R&B Song, uh, which is going to be pretty similar to a lot of the stuff you saw in Best R&B Performance, so let's get it. And my final five for Best R&B Song for this year, I have Damage by Her. Pick Up Your Feelings by Jasmine Sullivan, Good Days by SZA, Heartbreak Anniversary by Giveon, and Leave the Door Open by Silk Sonic. Uh, this five feel pretty good and feel pretty accurate in terms of what I feel like what, like five of the most beloved and most you know successful R&B songs of the year. But obviously everyone's vulnerable. I feel like the locks are definitely gonna be Silk Sonic and I wanna say SZA, and Jack, I mean, I, I heard too. I think her says that and Silk Sonic are the, are, the, are the locks, but I could be wrong. Let's see what happens. Other songs that are next in line, similar to R&B performance. We got Pink Swan to Kehlani with At My Worst, a beautiful R&B song. That's a beautiful song. I love the way it's written. Uh, How Much Can A Heart Take by Lucky Day and Yebba, or maybe Lucky Day is uh, over. Maybe that one. Peaches by Justin Bieber, Daniel Caesar, and Giveon. Peaches could get, could be nominated, but I hope it just gets performance and not song. Because Peaches is not the best song, but it's a great R&B performance. Either Motorbike or Water to Touch Me by Leon Bridges. I could see them making it in. You Made a Fool of Me by Anthony Hamilton, which I wanted to have in so badly, but I could fit him into my final five. So you have to just stick with being a traditional performance. Somewhat Love, They Go Breaking My Heart, or he Don't Know Nothing About It with Babyface by Jamin Lewis. Lost You by Snow Allegra. A Wasting Time by Brent Faz and Drake, which I also wanted to have my final five, but I couldn't fit them in. All the songs that are in contention as all the alternatives for this category. Again, we have Usher's Bad Habits, You Right 
uh, by Doja Cat The Weeknd, or maybe Doja Cat Streets, possibly. A Wild Side by Normani and Cardi B. A Louis Bag by Yeba and Shmino, or her song Boomerang. And also, You Want My Love by Earth, Wind & Fire and Lucky Day. All right, y'all, now on to Best Progressive R&B Album. When I tell y'all this has been the driest category all year, it's so crazy how dry this category is this year. And honestly, this is the one category where, where I was looking for who to put in and not who to take out. So that's, that's, that speaks volumes, you know? But the reason why this category is so dry and wide open this year is because I thought her and Snow Allegra would have been this category with, with their albums, but they're both gonna be in Best R&B Album. So with that happening, this category is wide open and I don't I don't really know who to put in, but I kind of just I, I settled on the final five, but I'm not that sure about it. So let's see, let me let me know y'all think. My final five are Anniversary by Bryson Tiller, Mood Valiant by Hiatus Coyote, 333 by Tanache, Cheers to the Best Memories by Division and Ty Dolla Sign, and Dawn by Yeba. The only two albums I've had here for since they came out have been um, Mood Valiant which is that's been locked for me i love that album i feel like it definitely should be nominated this year and yeba's dawn besides those two albums i don't know who else will be up in here bryson tiller that would be a cool nomination even though i don't think the album was that amazing it, i can see him coming here and that'll be okay tanache 333 i'd love for it to get in uh in this wide open year i'd love for her to get in i feel like it easily happened with this album tanache should have been grammy nominated like since the aquarius album to be honest in this category uh so i feel like this would be a great time for her to get nominated at, finally at the grammys uh, in this really wide open year in this category. I feel like I feel like she deserves it. Her album is great and she deserves it, you know? Division Tide All Sign was a really quiet album that came and went, but because of how beloved both of these, you know, guys are, Division and Tide All Sign, I could see them just making it off of, off of their namesake, but I could be wrong. And yeah, so that's 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 how I kind of broke down this category. Let me know what y'all think. <laughs> My other albums are next in line for this category. Fusion Tide All Sign by Tide Dollar Sign. Maybe his solo album can get love compared to his collab album with Division. The R plus R equals now live album by Robert Glasper and Taurus Martin. I've heard a lot of buzz for that project, even though that's like a really instrumental heavy album. So it's not, it doesn't have like a lot of vocals on it. So I don't know if it'll get nominated for this for this category, but it could happen. Masego studying abroad extended stay. If it were up to me, I would nominate Masego in this category, but I don't think he has enough juice to get the nomination. But he could. I, I could be wrong, but I would love for Masego to get nominated in this category with his album. I love that album. And also Nails and Then Life Was Beautiful. Who uh, and she was nominated two years ago for this for this category for her album Saturn. So she could definitely get in uh, with her new album, which is great as well. But even though her this album has like less fanfare on it, it's more quiet than her previous album. And then other albums I feel like are contention, as well as some alternatives. We have Be Right Back by Georgia Smith and Van Jess's Homegrown, the deluxe version. Pretty wild and wide open category this year. I feel like anything can and anything will happen, so let's see. <laughs> but yeah, that's, those are my thoughts. Let me know something about this category down below. All right, y'all, now on to Best R&B Album, which is a category that I feel is very stacked this year, and I love seeing it. It's such a beautiful category. Uh, my final picks for Best R&B Album are Whole Tales by Jasmine Sullivan, Back of My Mind by Her, Jim and Lewis Volume 1 by Terry Lewis and Jimmy Jam, Temporary Highs in the Violet Skies by Snow Allegra, and Gold Digger Sound by Leon Bridges. I love this category. I love this final five. Obviously, everyone's vulnerable, but I think this is a pretty good final five for who I think will get nominated. I, I want to bank on at least three of these getting nominated, especially Jasmine, her, and Jamin Lewis, and Leon as well. Snow is vulnerable, but I think she'll make it in. We'll see. I love this category. Even the, even the alternatives are great, too. The albums that I have next in line for this category, Alicia by Alicia Keys. Nacho Muse, the deluxe version by Celeste, which is a great album that I would love to nominate, but she's a UK artist that not a lot of Americans know about, so I don't know if she'll get in. Uh, but her album was amazing. I love Celeste, a great artist. Pink Planet by Pink Sweats could definitely make it in as well. We Are by John Batiste, you know, another artist beloved in the industry. And Love is the New Black by Anthony Hamilton. I had Anthony Hamilton in my final five for so long, and I really wanted him to get nominated for it because I love his new album, Love is the New Black. And Anthony Hamilton's album is amazing. I love his new album. But unfortunately, I took him out because I felt like I didn't have enough room in my final five for him, but I, I would love for him to get in. Which is why I really wanted Snow Allegra and her to be in Best Progressive R&B album so we could have room for people like Anthony Hamilton to make it into this category, but it's all good. Other albums I had that in contention as alternatives in this category, All of Everything by Aloe Black. Black, Misunderstood by Queen Nigel, On Earth and in Heaven by Robin Thicke, 
Overgrown by Joyce Rice, which is an album that I would love to get nominated in this category, but I don't think Joyce has enough, you know, fanfare on her name and, and her brand, but I'll, her album is so amazing. I'd love for her to get in. Also, another great album, Shelly, uh, FKA Drum by Shelly, formerly known as Drum. See Me by Leela James, great project, great album. And lastly, Mother by Cleo Soul, another amazing album. These are all great albums that I just don't think have enough eyes and ears on them, but maybe could sneak in if there's enough love you know uh in the in the in the recording academy so all right y'all now on to the rap categories let's get it first up we got best rap performance so these are my final picks in this category for my final five for best rap performance i have up by cardi b rap star by polo g my life by j cole 21 savage and moray family ties by baby keem and kendrick lamar and way too sexy by drake Future and Young Thug. <laughs> Interesting final five, but I feel like they all make sense to me. Um, I feel like the locks are definitely gonna be, I wanna say Rap Star and My Life. I feel like our locks. Up, I don't think it's a lock, but I think it'll definitely get in because the Grammys love Cardi B and Up was the number one song this year. Family Ties to me is like the, the critical darling sleeper pick to get in. It hasn't been like a huge song on the charts lately, but I think it's one of the best rap songs of the year and the performance between him and between Baby Kim and Kendrick was out of this world. I definitely deserve a Grammy nomination. Such a good performance from both of them. Crazy record. And Way Too Sexy, while I don't want it to be nominated in this category, I could definitely see it being nominated. It was the number one song, one of the most popular songs of the year. Everyone's, you know, everyone loves this record. And I feel like these are, you know, three beloved guys in the industry who, I thought the Grammys would love to give a bone to. So I could say, I could definitely see Way Too Sexy being nominated, but personally, I don't want it to happen, but I, I see it being nominated. So it is what it is. And with Drake, with Drake having a big year, I feel like they're gonna wanna give him as many nominations as possible, but not like way too many, but I, as many as they can give him, you know? So those are my final five for Best Rap Performance. Um, other songs are next in line for me. Body or Thought Shit by Megan Thee Stallion, uh, whichever one she, she submits to the category. Best Friend by Sweetie and Doja Cat. What It Feels Like by Jay-Z and Nipsey Hussle which I had on my final five for a while, but I took them out because I don't think there's been enough sustaining love for that song, even though I feel like it deserves the nomination. whoop -dee by CJ, love that song. whoop -dee. <laughs> shout out CJ. Every Chance I Get by DJ Khaled, Lil Baby and Lil Durk. Whole Lot of Money Remix by Bia and Nicki Minaj. And Off the Grid by Kanye West, Playboy Cardi, and Fabio Foreign. I can definitely see all the songs being next in line as well. And there's some other songs I think are other alternatives for this category. We got Running by 21 Savage and Metro Boomin, Tyler Hero by Jack Harlow, Back in Blood by Pooh Shiesty and Lil Durk, which is a Royal Hood song for the Grammys, but I can see it happening potentially. It's a long shot, but I can see it happening. And Straightening by The Migos. I can definitely see it happening as well as another alternative song. All right, now we're on to Best Melodic Rap Performance, uh, which is always one of my favorite categories every year because I love this category because it's pretty much what music is right now. <laughs> pretty much, can we talk about it? <laughs> so, my final picks for Best Melodic Rap Performance, we have Astronaut in the Ocean by Masked Wolf, Calling My Phone by Lil TJ and Black, Industry Baby by Lil Nas X and Jack Harlow, Need to Know by Doja Cat, and Hurricane by Kanye West, The Weeknd, and Lil Baby, or potentially uh, Jail with him and Jay-Z, whatever they submit. I'm assuming they'll submit Hurricane. So those are my final picks for this category. I feel good about those final five songs. I really do. I feel like all these five are definitely leading the, leading the pack for this year in this category. Uh, but obviously everyone's vulnerable. The songs that I have next in line for this category are Pop Smoke's What You Know About Love, which I can see being like a, you know, another like, not a filler nomination, but really a nomination to kind of just give some more love to Pop Smoke in the wake of his passing last year. I could definitely see him getting nominated for this song, which has been a really big song throughout the year, low key. So Your Mind Still remixed by Young Blue and Drake. A big song this year, I could definitely see him getting love in this category. Pride is the Devil by J. Cole, Lil Baby. One of my favorite songs off of the Off Season album. And I know it's been submitted for this category. I don't think it'll get nominated, but definitely I think it's in contention, so I definitely want to mention it. Late at Night by Roddy Rich, one of the you know biggest songs of the year in this category. Could definitely see him getting in. Roddy was nominated you know, last year for the box. We also got What's Your Name by Tyler Crater, uh, NBA Youngboy, and Ty Dolla Sign and Motley Crue by Post Malone. Those are all songs I think are definitely next in line for this category. And then other songs that are in contention as well as some other alternatives. We also have Wolves by Big Sean and uh, Post Malone. Franchise by Travis Scott, Young Thug and M.I.A. Which I don't know why it's here when it should, I feel like it should be in Best Rap Performance. I think M.I.A. is what made it come into this category, but whatever. And then also, 
The Jackie by Boz, J, J. Cole and Lil TJ, and Girls Want Girls by Drake and Lil Baby, which I hope doesn't get nominated at all, but it could because Drake is Drake, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right, and now on to best rap song. For best rap song in my final five, I have Astronaut in the Ocean by Masked Wolf, Best Friend by Sweetie and Doja Cat, Every Chance I Get, by DJ Khaled, Lil Baby, and Lil Durk. My Life by J. Cole tw and 21 Savage. Uh, Murray won't be nominated because he didn't help write the song. And Industry Baby by Lil Nas X and Jack Harlow. So I feel pretty good about this final five. I feel like the locks to me are definitely gonna be Industry Baby. I wanna say, Indi I think Industry Baby is the only lock in this category, but I feel good about the other four as well. My, my songs are next in line for best rap song. Cardi B's Up, CJ's Whoop D, Rap Star by Polo G, Whole Lot of Money Remix by Bia and Nicki Minaj, which I think is a really great rap song. I think it's written so well. Family Ties by Baby Kim and Kendrick Lamar. Kanye West and Jay-Z with Jail, or Kanye West, Lil Baby and The Weeknd with Hurricane, either one. And then lastly, Drake's Way Too Sexy with Future and Young Thug, which again, I hope does not get nominated, but it definitely could because Drake is Drake. <laughs> and other songs that I have in contention as well, you know, for other alternatives for this category, we got, you know, Your Mind Still Again with Young Blue and Drake, Back in Blood with Pooh Shiesty and Lil Durk. Body or Thought Shit with Megan Thee Stallion. Or what It Feels Like with Jay-Z and Nipsey Hussle. A Straightening by The Migos. Late at Night by Roddy Rich. Motley Crue by Post Malone. I see that happening as well. And yeah, that's the last one. Uh, let me know what y'all think about this category down below. All right, y'all, now I want to best rap album, which to me is always one of the most exciting categories every year. Uh, can we talk about, y'all remember what they do with this category last year? I had only one album correct last year, and that was Nas's King Disease. Every other album I, I had in my nominations list last year did, did get nominated, and what got nominated in place was like these four albums that were all amazing, like real, like loved hip hop albums, but none of them were like, like blockbuster albums, like the ones I had that I thought were gonna get nominated. So last year was really interesting to see what they do with the rap album. I'm excited to see what they do with it this year. But for my final picks for best rap album, I have Good News by Megan Thee Stallion, The Off Season by J. Cole, Call Me Forget Lost by Tyler Creator, King's Disease 2 by Nas, and Certified Lover Boy by Drake. I love that I have J. Cole and Tyler Creator and Nas in here. And to me, the locks in this category are only, oh, actually, I don't even know if I have locks. I think Tyler and Megan are locks. Drake, I don't like that I have here, but it is what it is. I see him getting in off of his namesake and having one of the biggest albums of the year, even though it wasn't that critically you know, adored. Uh, so I can see him making it in, but then again, he didn't make it in with Scorpion. I'm not sure, did he make it in with Views? I think, yeah, he made it in with Views, but Chance Rapper won that year. So I think that kind of guy, I think Drake can get in this year. Uh, even if he doesn't win, I think I still seem to be nominated. So we'll see what happens. But I feel pretty good about his final five. Obviously, I was, I was also toying with Kanye being here for Donda. But I, I decided to leave out Kanye because I just felt like even though Donda is probably a little bit, maybe a little bit more beloved than, than Star Power Boy, I just think Drake has been more widespread and more out there this year. And his, his album is doing much better. So I feel like he has more love from people around the world. So I feel like that's why I have him in my fifth spot. But... It could be Kanye, or maybe it could be both of them, and maybe J. Cole is taking out, maybe Nas is taking out. I don't know, we'll see what happens, but I like, I like my final five out of this. Other albums that are next in line for this category, I got, obviously, like, like I said, Kanye West with Donda, that's obvious, he's he's definitely in contention as well. Detroit 2 by Big Sean, Savage Mode 2 by 21 Savage and Metro Boomin, That's What They All Say by Jack Harlow, The Voice of the Heroes by Lil Baby and Lil Durk, Hall of Fame by Polo G, I could definitely see it being a surprise pick in this category, even though I don't think it should happen, but it could. And lastly, the Melodic Blue by Baby Keem. Those are the albums I have next in line. I would love for Baby Keem to sneak up in there. I'd love for that to happen. I don't think it will, but I'd love for that to happen. And other albums that I have that are in contention as alternatives, but aren't necessarily next in line, I say are Benny the Butcher's Burden of Proof. I love that album. Toby Nigue's Sync Original. Shout out to my Nigerian brother. That album is crazy. Shout out to him. Exodus by DMX, which is not that good of an album, but it's DMX, and with his passing, I could see them wants to nominate this album as like a send off for him. I see that happening, even though that album wasn't that great. Culture 3 by The Migos, I could definitely see that happening. Uh, Vince Staples by Vince Staples is in contention, I feel like. The House is Burning by Isaiah Rashad could definitely be in contention as well. It, that was a album that was really quietly loved by a lot of people this year, so I can see that happening. And then lastly, our previous nominee last year, D Smoke with his latest album, War and Wonders, which was a great album. 
I don't think it'll get in compared to last year uh, with his, you know, with his other album, but great album and could definitely be in contention, but I don't think it'll make it in. So let's see what happens. But those are my thoughts on Best Rap Album, y'all. Let me know who y'all think is getting into Best Rap Album down below. Now we're on to Best Music Video. So for Best Music Video, my final five, I have 911 by Lady Gaga. Treat People With Kindness by Harry Styles. I love that video, it's a really fun video. Montero Calling By Your Name by Lil Nas X, which I think is a lock at this point. It won Video of the Year at the VMAs, and it's just one of the most talked about videos of the year. Corso by Tyler Creator, and Happier Than Ever by Billie Eilish. Like I said, the only lock I have in this category I think is Lil Nas X for his Montero video. Uh, one of the biggest moments of the year. No one else in this category is a lock to me, but I feel good about all four of them. I think the I think Tyler is definitely vulnerable, as well as Harry, even Lady Gaga too, because that video came out a long time ago. But all great videos, so I'm, I'm pulling for all five of them. All the alternatives I have in this category that I just want to mention really quickly: Link by Tierra Whack, All I Know So Far by Pink, that was a really cool video. Wild Side by Normani and Cardi B, still one of the best videos that I dropped this year. That video is insane. And you know, shout out to the you know the R&B vote in, in my speech video, which is, which doesn't happen a lot. I don't think yeah, R&B videos don't get nominated a lot in this category. So I would love for that to happen, but I don't think it will, but it definitely could. And also Coldplay and BTS is my universe. I'm not sure if they submitted this this video to this category, but great video, great song, and I love for it to get nominated because it really was a cool video, you know, to go to long to go along with a really great song. So best music video, I feel good about what I have here, but obviously there's probably a ton of videos that I've not seen or that maybe I did see, but I didn't think about actually putting on this list or I forgot about it or you know whatever so this video this this category is going to be wide open as it always is i could be wrong about a lot of these but uh, this is who i thought about for this category so let me let me know what y'all think about it down below and let me know what the videos that came out this year that, that you think were dope that i might have missed all right last category i want to talk about in depth is producer of the year a category that i don't feel like gets talked about enough but i respect a lot because i respect producers are here people who are doing the work behind the scenes i respect them uh, there's all there, I feel like there should, there should also be a songwriter of the year category as well. I really, I mean, we have song of the year, but I think it'd be cool for them to have like a songwriter of the year category. I think that'd be really cool as well, like to highlight one person. That'd be kind of cool. But even though signing is, is very collaborative, so that's that's difficult. But still, I think that'd be a cool idea. Let, let me know what you think about that. But for producer of the year, my final five, I have Daniel Negro or Nigro, however you say his name. D Mile, one of my favorites. Shout out to my guy D Mile, been holding it down all year. Phineas. To me, it feels pretty obvious. Jack Antonoff, he seems pretty set. And Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. I feel pretty good about those final five. You know, Daniel's behind, you know, Olivia Rodrigo's Sour album, one of the biggest albums of the year. d produced, you know, Fight For You For Her, Leave The Door Open by Silk Sonic, and a lot of other stuff this year. So shout out to d I feel like he's definitely gonna be in. Uh, he, he could miss, but I hope he, I hope he gets in. Uh, Phineas produced all of Billy's, you know, Happier Than Ever album, so I feel like he's definitely gonna be in again. Uh, Jack Antonov produced a lot of stuff this year for, you know, Lord, Lana Del Rey, and a lot of other people, so I feel like he could definitely make it in. And lastly, Trent Reznor and Akis Ross with their work on Halsey's I'm, uh, If I Can Have Love, I Want Power album. They produced that entire album, amazing production on that album. And also just their work on like, you know, on film scores in the, in the past year with Mank and, and, uh, and Soul. I could definitely see him, you know, having enough push against his category because of that stuff. But let's see what happens. And other alternatives I have in this category, uh, definitely Aaron Dessner for his work on Taylor Swift's Evermore. And Hit Boy as well. Hit Boy's had a lot of great stuff working on Nas's album, Big Sean's Detroit 2 album, a lot of other songs in between. Hit Boy could definitely make an addition. I, I love, I'd love for that to happen. Get some hip hop and producer of the year, you know, which doesn't happen all the time. And also take a day trip as well, you know, for their work on Lil Nas X's album, and a lot of other songs as well. Take a day trip could definitely make it in. They've had a great year. And some other producers who are in contention, I feel like, I'd say Greg Kirsten, Louis Bell, Andrew Watt or Watt. Uh, who got who won last year actually <laughs> and ricky reed as well so those are other producers that i feel like are definitely in line as well all right y'all so now i've done all the categories that i talk about in depth hope you enjoyed that now i just want to go through quickly some nominations i think could happen in other categories that i don't talk about in depth now, i could see machine gun kelly's tickets to my downfall happening in best rock album or best alternative album wherever he submitted it a uh, made in legos by WizKid. i could definitely see that happening in best global music album hope it hope it happens and I also am planning to see him and Thames be nominated and also winning Best Global Music Performance as well. I'm excited for that. Chris Stapleton, I'm, I'm expecting to see him in Best Country Album starting over. Bad Bunny, I'm expecting to see in Best Latin Pop or Urban Album with his album El Ultimo Tour del Mundo. 
Miley Cyrus could be a surprise pick in Best Rock album with her album Plastic Hearts, which is an album that I really love. Uh, even though I feel like it, it I don't know, I, I guess it could be a pop or rock album, it's kind of both, but I don't think she'll get in, but she definitely could be a surprise pick in that category, we'll see what happens. Taylor Swift's Folklore, The Long Pond Studio Sessions could be nominated in Best Music Film. I think that definitely is a strong contender in that category. Arlo Parks with her album Collapsed in Sunbeams being a strong contender for Best Alternative Album. I don't know why I feel like her album would have really fit beautifully in Best Progressive R&B Album and I feel like she would have been a shooting for nomination and she could have had a, had a really good shot at even winning this year, you know, with how dry that category is. Uh, whereas she's fighting for nomination and best alternative album. So I don't know why her team is submitting her there. Her album is like, I say her album is like alternative R&B. Like it's, it has a lot of R&B and soul at its foundation with like, with alternative flair. So I'm not mad that it's being submitted to best alternative album, but I feel like her album would have fit better and best progressive R&B album. I feel like that would have been a better, a better fit for Collapsed in Sunbeams, but it is what it is. I'm also expecting to see one of Billie Eilish's submissions in Best Music Film, either her, her movie, her documentary, uh, The World's a Little Blurry, or her Amazon Prime movie, Happier Than Ever, A Love Letter to Los Angeles. I can see, whatever she submits, I can see one of them being nominated for Best Music Film as well. So that'll be cool to see. I would love to see Willow pop up into the rock categories, you know, either rock performance or rock song with her song with Travis Barker, Transparent Soul and her album, uh, Lately I Feel Everything. I would love for that to happen. I don't I don't see it happening, but I would love for her to be a, a quiet sleeper pick in those categories. I'd love for that to happen. Shout out to Willow. Her album was amazing this year. Pink's uh, Pink, All I Know So Far could hop up in Best Music Film. That'd be cool as well. Oh yeah, another music film nominee I wanna talk about. I, I really hope that Questlove gets in for his film, um, Summer of Soul, or when, the Revolution cannot be televised. I, that was one of the best documentaries that came out this year, and I hope it gets nominated for Best Music Film. Such a good film, I hope it gets nominated, he deserves it. But if it doesn't get love here, hopefully he'll get love at the Oscars. Halsey with her album, If I Can't Have Love, I Want Power. It got submitted to Best Alternative Music Albums, so hopefully uh, it can get nominated there, but I could definitely see it missing, but hopefully it gets nominated. That's a great, it's a really good album. And Casey Musgraves with either, um, I think it's gonna be Camera Roll, even though I think it should've been Justified, but apparently it's gonna be Camera Roll that gets submitted to Best Country Soul Performance and Best Country Song, which is fine. Camera is a cute song, but I would have rather Justified be nominated in those categories, but it is what it is. So we'll probably see Casey Musgraves nominated there, especially since I see her missing her album nominations, so I think it'll definitely give her song nominations. But hopefully Mickey Guyton can squeeze into Best Country Album, I'd love to see that as well. Her album, Remember Her Name, was amazing. One of my favorite albums of the year, I love that project. I will love for it to get into Best Country Album, but she's a really new artist, so I don't know if she has enough you know, enough noise around her name, but I hope, I hope that happens. Cause she got nominated last year for her song, Black Like Me, so hopefully it happens. Her album is amazing. And then lastly, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm starting to see Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga, their album Love For Sale, and Best Traditional Pop Vocal Album. So yeah, man, those are just some other nominations that I want, that I want to mention that I'm planning to see in other, in other categories. Hopefully most of those will come to fruition. And some other thoughts I want to share with you guys as I close out the video. If my general feel nominations are, are gonna be on point this year, like if they're gonna be on point for the most part, then we're gonna see a lot of R&B songs be nominated for Song of the Year this year, which I, which I think is really interesting. I didn't really plan it on purpose, not because I'm an R&B fiend, but I just planned it out that way and I feel like it works out. Having hers damage, Sizzle's Good Days, Silk Sonic Leader Open, and Give You On Heartbreak Anniversary in Song of the Year. We'll have four R&B songs in Song of the Year if this plays out how I think it will. But obviously it probably won't, but let's see what happens. Four songs, R&B songs in Song of the Year, that'll be insane. If not four, I think we're definitely gonna have at least two or three, which will be dope. When was the last time we had like two or three R&B songs in Song of the Year? That would be amazing. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. I think Silk Sonic and, and SZA are pretty locked up as well as her. Giveon could miss, but I hope he makes it in. Let's see what happens. And also, I wanna talk about this. It really sucks that Levitating could not get submitted this year. It was legible, and I think they wanted to submit it, but Dua Lipa's team, I think, decided to not submit it because of the, the baby controversy, which is such a shame, because Levitating is literally one of the biggest songs of the year, and also one of my favorite songs of all time. Like, Levitating is low-key one of my favorite songs that I've ever heard in my life. I love that song to pieces. That is like a perfect pop song. I told my friends about this. I told them about this like, yo, I was like, yo, Levitating is a perfect pop song. That song is crazy. The, the solo version and the version with the baby. The baby did his thing on his, on his version too. But it's a shame that the only version that's eligible, which is the baby version, they're not, you know, Dua's team is not, is not submitting it because of all the controversies around the baby. And I'm so mad at the baby because like, 
He could have gotten love at the Grammys to share for that record, and Dua Lipa deserves her nominations for Levitating. She should have been nominated, and I had her in my nominations for Record of the Year and Best Pop Duo Slash Group Performance before I realized and I saw an article that said that her team wasn't submitting the song. Which is so whack, but at least she got, you know, she got a Grammy last year, so it is what it is, but Levitating deserves some love this year, so I'm really mad about that. And also, this is the last thing I'll say, with WAP not, uh, let's just not being submitted this year, I'm really, now I'm really extra confused as to why they didn't submit it last year. Like, I said this in my video last year, I was like, why didn't they submit WAP last year at the, at the peak of its popularity? They, they should have submitted, Cardi B and Megan should have submitted WAP last year. I thought they were going to submit it this year, but they didn't even submit it this year, so it's like, why? I don't understand why y'all wouldn't do that, but yeah, so WAP was not, it was in my nominations for a good minute this year, but once I realized that they weren't submitting it, I took it out of record of the year and rap performance because it's, it's, it was, it's not being submitted, but a dumb decision on Cardi B and Megan's team's part last year. Y'all should have submitted WAP last year. What happened with that? Like, <laughs> all right, y'all. So those are my predictions for who I think we nominated for the 2022 Grammys um, coming up at the end of January of 2022. I'm excited for the nominations. The nominations will come out on November 23rd third later this month i'm excited for them i'm excited to see what i got wrong what i got right i'm excited to see you know who was is the most nominated this year i think it's gonna be a toss-up between her olivia rodrigo or maybe billy eilish or lil nas x i think those are the four artists that are in contention for being the most nominated there could be someone else i'm not thinking about but to me those are the four artists that i think are most likely to be the most nominated artists this year but yeah man, i'm looking forward to seeing what happens especially with there being no nominations committees this year i want to see what's the real like what's the real role this year like who really has love and not a committee helping them out so yeah man i'm excited to see what happens november 23rd I'll be back with the video reacting to the nominations when they come out on the 23rd, so look out for that. But in the meantime, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And like I said before, let me know what you thought about my picks and let me know who, you, who you're rooting for this year. Uh, let me know what are your predictions for the nominations and all the, and all the categories you care about. Uh, let me know if you, think, if you think I missed anybody. And yeah, let me, let, you know, give me all your thoughts down below, okay? Appreciate y'all. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, okay? Thank you. And like I always say, guys, live your best life, drink more water, stay woke. And if you're mad or sad, go listen to your favorite song, make you feel better, okay? Go listen to your favorite song. All right, y'all, this has been your boy Bright, the RBK. Thank you for watching. But for now, I'm signing off, baby. Bye, y'all. Peace. Just do that, baby Don't worry about nothing No, 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 no I came to vibe You came to function Just do that, baby Don't worry about nothing No, no, no Relax just a little bit You don't gotta worry You can just have